Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a second look at uh, some Nidorf variations and uh, these are all lines that cropped up in the TCEC Season 23 Chess Bonus where Stockfish, Leela and Komodo Dragon took on the starting position against all the other engines. Now we've got quite a few Nidorfs in this. Uh, we looked at uh, a whole set uh, last uh, video and now we're going to have a look at a slightly different variation. How does this variation arise? Well, we start off with e4, c5, knight f3, d6, takes, takes, knight c3, a6, bishop e3, e5, um, knight g4 actually is thought to be pretty good by the engines. And I think I was was one of the first people to play this um, against uh, John Nunn in uh, 1991, 1992, long time ago. Um, but e5 is uh, the one that always gets the, the slight preference from the engines. So knight b3, bishop e7, f3, bishop e6, queen d2. And uh, well, in the previous uh, video, we talked about how h5 is, uh, is often played. And that was the move that I eventually settled on as a professional, just to stop white from playing g2 to g4. But castles is very normal. Um, it's the traditional old main line, and uh, it was played by um, a few engines in uh, in this bonus. B5, G5, and now we looked at uh, B5 to B4 in the previous video, and now we're going to have a look at Knight H5. So yeah, I mean these positions, uh, I find them very very tricky to understand as uh, as black. I mean I analyse them lots, but uh, never really felt that comfortable. Um, the problem is, is that um, you know you assume you know looking uh, when white plays a move like g4 and black plays a move like b5, that um, white's going to be attacking on the king side and black's going to be attacking on the queen side. Only somehow, you know, this often seems to get turned around because actually, you know, white's got some weaknesses on the king side. The f4 square, the g5 pawn is loose. And when black plays b5, then the c6 square is greatly weakened. And what you often find is that the whole situation turns around and uh, white ends up attacking on the queen side and black ends up attacking on the king side. And I find that very, very hard to, uh, you know, to grasp and to, uh, to sort of evaluate properly. You know, you tend to get uh, lost and a little bit confused. So let's have a look how the how the engines did. We've got two moves here. We've got uh, knight d5 and we've also got king b1. And uh, well, we'll have a look at king b1 first because it's featured actually in a, a recent game from the Sinkfield Cup where uh, Fabiano Caruana uh, ground down uh, Maxime Vachilagrave. And um, well, what did uh, Maxime do in this position? Uh, knight b6. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, always, you know, you've got to ask yourself, well, why doesn't black make obvious moves? I mean, if you go a move like b4, we go knight d5, takes, takes, and then, um, yeah, this b4 pawn is loose. And after you go a5, then I get the bishop into b5. And that is rather annoying, the bishop's coming into c6. And actually, the engines don't like this at all for black. I mean, uh, stockfish against dragon, dragon against stockfish, it was all ending in wins for white. So black tends to uh, just hang on a little bit with that and uh, play the move knight b6. And knight b6 is quite nice. I mean, it's uh, threatening a move like uh, knight c4, for example, which, uh, you know, could be quite awkward. So white plays knight a5, very typical idea here, just exploiting the fact that the queen's no longer attacking the a5 square and the knight threatening knight c6 takes uh, e7. And there's a bit of tactics to it as well. If you go b4, then I go knight c6 and uh, bc3, queen c3, and uh, yeah, white, black can't actually hold on to both of these pieces. So uh, we get queen d7, bishop takes b6, rook c8, takes, takes, queen a5, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is just a, a pawn up for white, really. And uh, yeah, I know black's always got some counter play on the b-file, got an f4 square, not easy for, um, for white to win, but uh, again, both stockfish and dragon were putting away the point when they had the white pieces. So, um, yeah, you've got to do something basically to cover the c6 square. And there are two ways of doing it. You can play uh, queen to c7, which uh, was tending to be the engine's favourite move, or the move rook c8, which was played by uh, Maxime. Actually, rook to c8 seems fine. Um, only, well, you'll see what I mean. Um, you know, it's one of those things where seems fine, but is a little bit tricky. Um, so knight d5 was played by Fabiano. 
um, takes and takes. And this is the, the big idea for white. You know, uh, you've got this knight on a5, pawn on d5, you're threatening knight c6. And that's what I mean by attacking on the queen side, because, you know, the idea would be if you play a move like bishop d7, for example, I go bishop d3, rook c1, and I'm just going to go uh, c4 in this position. So, you know, it's just white attacking on the uh, on the queen side and just claiming really that g5, it's not an attack, it's just disrupted the black pieces. So um, uh, very often in these positions, black has to take the decision, OK, um, then I need to win a pawn. Uh, to get rid of that knight and I'm giving up the uh, the light squares and in this position um, um, yeah Fabiano played c4 um, I mean actually the engines are not particularly impressed with with white's position here um, Stockfish played um, uh, bishop d3 g6 bishop e4 against uh, um, Komodo a few times uh, queen c7 c3 you know and just uh, well, just uh, sort of settling into these um, uh, to these uh, light squares, which is, um, you know, not at all bad. Komodo doesn't see any real problem with it, but um, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it felt like, um, you know, perfectly fine compensation for white. And c4 has been a very common move. Uh, knight f4 takes takes, h4, and now queen a4. And um, yeah, I mean, these positions, I mean, uh, um, I mean, you know, for the engines, these are just completely equal, you know, um, they're, you know, neither Komodo nor Stockfish, you know, are particularly worried about it. And they'll hold all these positions till kingdom come. Yeah, from a human point of view. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, those light squares, uh, the weak light squares in uh, in Black's position, you know, this bishop on um, on E7, which is, uh, you know, kind of weak and restricted by um, by these pawns. Um, the fact that the black king, you know, can easily come, uh, you know, become a target really um, uh, along the b1h7 diagonal, you know, it doesn't, uh, I don't feel comfortable or, or really settled, you know, as, uh, as black in this position, even if the engine is telling me that it's fine. Um, and I mean, what uh, Fabiano did, he just played the move that really keeps the pressure on. I mean, there've been a lot of games with bishop d3 uh, takes... Uh, queen e4, which is a, a cunning way of attacking h7 whilst exploiting the pin on uh, c4. Um, g6, h5, all possible, but, um, you know, there have just been many, many short draws. This is all completely known, including a game, Dominguez Perez against uh, Vashi Lagrave, St. Louis 2022. So, uh, you know, d5 takes cd, uh, takes, check, king a1, d2, and... Uh, yeah, this is actually just a draw. A3, queen c1, king a2, queen c4, check with perpetual. And I've had some uh, some stockfish um, Komodo games that went that way as well. So, I mean, that's uh, clear. You know, you can you can remember that. But, uh, well, rook c1 was played by uh, Fabiano. And this is a much more, uh, you know, a much more holding move, really waiting for black to, uh, to play properly. And, uh, yeah, here, um, uh, Maxime... Yeah, either misremembered or um, or got confused somehow because uh, there was a previous game that um, I mean really followed best engine play and that was uh, between uh, Ganguly and uh, Mendonca and uh, that was rook e8, bishop d3, rook c5, queen e4, g6, h5. I mean uh, Komodo and Stockfish are agreeing a draw here. Um, rook e5, queen b7, um, and now yeah b takes c4 was uh, was equal according to my engines and. Rook d8, uh, rook h2, queen a5, um, you know, eventually led to um, uh, to a draw as well in this game. Um, you know, pretty clear really that the engines, uh, you know, thought that uh, playing rook e8 in any case was a good idea. But um, Maxime played rook c5 and rook e5, which is um, a little bit strange. So, and after queen f4, well, I mean, you know, Stockfish and Dragon, they both sort of say, well, you've given up the f4 pawn for, I don't really understand why. But still after rook b8, you know, you're still, uh, you're still in there and, uh, you know, you're, you're worse now, but, uh, but it's not so bad. But um, yeah, um, Maxime played a move that you're going to see a few times in this video. F6, you know, just um, the idea is attack that G5 pawn and, uh, you know, get some, uh, get some counterplay. I mean, it looks really good. 
Only, um, yeah, uh, Fabiano knew his stuff because he played uh, Queen H2, which is a very unpleasant move after FG, HG, we're attacking uh, H7. So it sort of keeps that pawn on G5. And uh, and now from now on, all of my engine games are just uh, losses for uh, for black. You know, uh, it's just, um, yeah, you, you've weakened your king side um, and white's light squared bishop is, you know, it's just going to be really, uh, really very dangerous. There's lots of unpleasant light squares there. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, how did the Vashila Graf game go? He went uh, rook c5, queen e2, rook e5, a little bit of repetition, and then queen d2, check. You can't take because of uh, queen d5, check. Um, and then after king h8, queen e2, rook e5, queen d3. And, you know, you just see there's such a struggle for black. This bishop is really passive. You can't take on g5. And, you know, white's always got opportunities to either open the g-file or play g6. So, I mean, even uh, lining up, for example, you know, is possible against the uh, the pawn h7. So, um, I mean, Maxime put up a stunning defense and actually reached a, a table-based drawn uh, <laughs> queen and two pawns versus queen. But, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we humans, unlike the uh, the engines, can't ask for table-based adjudication. And, uh, yeah, it's a very difficult ending to hold and uh, Maxime lost it in the end. But, I mean, I, I think you can see, you know, you can see the... Um, no, the feeling about it. I mean, this is a, an equal position in principle, but uh, yeah, in terms of things that can go wrong, it's much easier to imagine things going wrong for black than for white, really. Um, but that was uh, that was Maxime's move, rook c8. The engines uh, preferred the move queen c7, and uh, that has got a clever idea in it. The idea is that if white goes knight d5, then actually uh, the engines just want to play take some bishop f5. So not take that pawn, not give up all the light squares. And the point is the queen on c7 is sidestepping knight c6. So when you go knight c6, um, they're playing f6. Again, this move to um, to break open the king side squares. But the point is we've still got a light squared bishop. So we've got some sort of cover of the light squares that you're weakening temporarily when you play f6. And, uh, well, this was the um, um, the continuation of quite a few games, actually. Takes, takes, bishop, g6. And now you can see that black's not doing badly at all. You know, this bishop is an absolute rock defending uh, uh, this weak pawn on, on uh, h7. And we're just getting ready to line up on the f-file. We've got this f3. If this knight ever takes the bishop, then we've got uh, um, attacks against uh, the c2 square. So, um, you know, white's fine, but, uh, but black's fine here. And uh, actually, my engine seemed to reach a, a sort of equilibrium in this position. Um, so that's why uh, queen c7 is interesting. Um, and uh, um, here, my, my engines were playing uh, um, a3. Well, actually, in the bonus, the engines were playing uh, a3 here. And, uh, um, yeah, just to, uh, to stop b5 to b4 and um, just waiting to see, you know, what sort of useful move does black have here. Now, the normal move is um, is rook b8. And, uh, well, now we play the move uh, knight to d5. And, of course, you know, what's the idea? The idea is the rook's gone to b8. Black was looking to try and get him b5, b4. But now, with a pawn on d5, knight c6 will gain a tempo against the rook on b8. So here, once again, um, you know, black has to play um, bishop takes d5 and go for this type of position. Um you might ask, um, why wouldn't I play a move like rook a c8? And that is perfectly reasonable because actually Komodo Dragon and both and Stockfish, they both played this move and they both seem to enjoy it. Um, if you go knight d5, again, I'm going to take, take, go bishop f5, knight c6, f6. And well, I mean, white's gained the move a3, black's played the rook to c8, but essentially we're looking at pretty much the same sort of position. You know, bishop f6, takes, takes, rook a8, Bishop e3, queen d7. And again, if you ask me, I would much rather be white in this position. I mean, you're, you're entrenched on the queen side squares and it sort of feels like it could be much more dangerous than anything black can do on the uh, king side. But Stockfish and Komodo were quite, uh, you know, were quite sanguine about it all. Didn't really see uh, that white was going to break from the queen side and were quite happy to, uh, you know, gradually and slowly get the king side play going, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, it came in, knight f4 came in. You start uh, using the queen to uh, to annoy a little bit, and uh, yeah, um, Stockfish held this. But yeah, again, you know, it's one of those things where you say, yeah, I'd rather be white, really, you know. So, um, um, but after a3, rook b8, then we're going knight d5. And here, because of this threat of knight c6, 
blacks forced to get to uh, to go in for this and this was uh, yeah you know again very very uh, interesting to um uh, to see this really um yeah i mean c4 is not so dangerous now because we've got our rook on b8 protecting the b pawn so not worried at all about that so actually white plays bishop c4 um queen d8 bishop a2 and uh yeah i mean you've got this bishop on a on a very interesting uh, square there and uh yeah the question is how does black free itself and uh well i mean here uh, the engines were taking the opportunity to uh get rid of the g5 pawn free up that knight and then play queen f6 takes takes and rook d6 and actually we're following a correspondence game and this is actually stockfish against halogen from this uh from this uh, position and um, uh, Stockfish managed to beat Halogen from this position. Um, in my engine games uh, it didn't manage to beat Komodo Dragon. Komodo, yeah this is quite quite amazing actually, it's not something I particularly guess. Rook a8 was Halogen, a5, rook e1, rook b e8 which I hadn't expected but uh, I think it keeps the, uh, the f7 square defended which gives black some counterplay. And um, yeah, it was this amazing idea. Knight e4, we're threatening uh, knight c3, knight d2 with the rook on e1. So obviously you can't take the b5 pawn yet. We go rook d1, rook e5. And after rook d5, yeah, Komodo Dragon went rook e8. E and this is quite nice because uh, the idea is that um, uh, after something like rook takes b5, we can just play knight d6, attacking the rook on b5. And if you go rook d6, then I go rook e1, check, and then mate. So yeah, Stockfish played rook d1 and then rook e5 holding the b5 pawn and they happily agreed a draw by repetition like this. Tricky, huh? Not an easy ending to uh, to know. I mean, either you've got to know this or um, um, or you end up suffering. And uh, well, Halogen uh, ended up suffering somewhat. Um, played um, a bit more passively, although not such a bad idea. Gave up the e5 pawn and sort of uh, held things. But uh, on move 30, um, instead of rook c8, as, as was played in uh, a correspondence game, uh, Stockfish unleashed b4 and novelty. And um, yeah, this ended up working quite well. I mean, if you let uh, Stockfish uh, run and run on, the, on this position, then um, it ends up being um, uh, a draw. Uh, Stockfish finds some, sort of, uh, some sort of draw. But if you have a look at what happened to, um, to poor old Halogen, um, it just ended up, um, yeah, losing... Uh, um, losing both its pawns and uh, yeah and, and, and then you know this this b pawn is, is a real runner in actual fact you know together with the c pawn and the bishop to hold everything and uh, stockfish put away halogen like this so I mean uh, I, I think you know you're probably getting a, a sense of uh, uh, of what I'm saying is that you know this line is quite nice for white really you know maybe not enough for a stockfish to be komodo with but um um, very uh, a very nice line for um, uh, for beating um, uh, a human opponent with. So King B one is a is a pretty good move there, uh, I think. Um, but there's another very interesting move, um, which is Knight D five, which was uh, um, Leela's choice, I think. So uh, Bishop D five played E D and then F six. And um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, uh, again, this counterplay happening. Um, it's quite important, by the way, that the queen is still on d8. I mean, this is why, again, these positions are quite difficult to uh, to deal with. But, you know, g6 could be nasty if the queen had already been committed to c7. But after hg, you know, having uh, queen e8 to give some support to the g6 pawn and the, the light squares in general is actually very useful. So um, uh, g takes f6 is played. Uh, bishop f6. And now we get on to uh, a few little experiments that I had with uh, with Leela playing at one node. And um, I can tell you, um, uh, I mean, I played for the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, my new book. I played um, uh, a um, um, 101 game match. I miscounted. That's why 101. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I ended up playing all sorts of different openings just to, to keep some variety, of course. Um, but the Nidorfs I found unbelievably difficult against uh, Leela. I was suffering in every single one of them. And I was even starting there from quite, you know, normal positions. And uh, it's just something that Leela plays very well. And uh, somehow, tactically, I never managed to uh, uh, to get much going. And here, once again, I, I suffered quite badly. Um, King to b1 was played by Leela. It's not the, uh, the main move. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, um, uh, knight f4 is the uh, is the main move. I played that in a in a second game. Knight a5, knight b6, and then um, knight c6 is uh, so against Wojciechek. Queen c7 takes takes c3. 
which is okay, but I don't know, rookie one, rookie one, rookie three was played. Sort of feels like, you know, you've given black a lot of active squares there. Leela played, just played the move C4. Um, B takes C4 and, uh, well, uh, Ketty, Arakamia Grant, uh, um, Georgian uh, Grandmaster and also uh, um, Women's Grandmaster and also uh, now playing for Scotland, uh, played Queen B4, which is a very good uh, 1E4 player. Um, got a very good position. Um, actually, Leela just took on C4 and just played this, um, this position with a knight on D6. Bishop on c4, knight e4. And uh, to be honest, this was very uncomfortable for black. And um, and I even lost this game in the end. I, I, I had a saving uh, a saving move towards the end, which I missed. But uh, I mean, you know, uh, Lilo, of course, you know, uh, playing normally would have just put me away. It was a very unpleasant position. And uh, Lila just playing purely on uh, on evaluation, not on, um, uh, with no calculation, was too strong for me. So yeah, you know. I, those sort of things, uh, you know, I, I like, you know, playing these games, even if I don't like uh, losing them sometimes, because um, um, it's simply that, you know, you get a good sense of um, how, what sort of skills does my opponent need in order to win a position um, or in order to play this position. I mean, if, uh, you know, if I'm just just wiping Leela off the board, um, then, uh, you know, I mean, that's great, right? Uh, I mean, it just means that uh, positional play isn't enough. It's really tactical. It's tricky. But if Leela's just controlling everything and without any calculation, it's just playing good positional moves. And it just means that White's, that, uh, White's position is really safe. And, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to really stir up trouble against it. So, you know, probably one to avoid. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's this thing, right? I mean, training against engines, if you just alert and you understand what the training uh, is doing and how your engines are playing, you can get so much amazing information for, um, uh, for your practical over the board games. Um, I mean, I also played Queen E8 against Leela. Um, and um, so Bishop H3 happened. Um, Bishop D8. And now this is where, you know, the confusing thing happens because, uh, yeah, once again, my um, uh, my queen side came under enormous attack. Queen b4, hitting d6, um, bishop c7, queen c3, which is really unpleasant. Um, we're threatening queen c7 and also queen c6 as well. And all my stuff's under pressure. Um, queen d8, queen c6. And now I miscalculated. Um, I went rook f3 um, and uh, Leela just hit me. Um, again, this is without calculation. Can you imagine? With bishop g5, knight df6, bishop g4, which is rather evil. Uh, the bishop's hitting the, <laughs> the rook on f3 and the knight on h5. Um, well, I spotted something uh, confusing, which is what I went for. Um, takes rook c4, queen b7, rook b8. And here I was a bit lucky um, because, well, uh, uh, queen, a, uh, queen a6 was what Leela played. Um, queen a7, um, I thought was very good. I actually thought that queen a6 would be probably okay here, but actually there's even better. There's just queen f7 and the queen escapes and uh, and white's just a piece up. So that was very close to losing, but uh, Leela took on a6 and I just uh, repeated moves like this, saving a draw. But again, you can see, you know, how uh, how tricky this is, to be honest, how well Leela plays. Um, and yeah, the awkwardness in black's position on the queen side, the, the, the side of the board that black, you know, thought it was attacking on and uh yeah getting into trouble there so yeah but as i said i've always had um a lot of trouble with leela um even playing without any calculation playing these uh, these nidorfs as black which is odd really because i'm i mean i'm a nidorf player really i mean i uh, i played all my professional career studied it a lot so you know i would have thought somehow that um that i'd uh, i'd know quite a bit but um well i do know quite a bit but uh, it's obviously just not good enough is it um, so knight a5 is, is the, uh, the normal move played. It's also the move played by, um, by Leela against, um, I think it was Mantissa. Was it Mantissa? I think it was Mantissa. Oh, Black Marlin, sorry, against Black Marlin in, uh, in the, um, uh, in the TCC, uh, chess bonus. King b1, bishop d8, knight b7. Um, we're actually we're vaguely we're vaguely sort of following a game of uh, Maxime Vashi Lagrave again. This is uh, Paravian against Vashi Lagrave. Um, Paravian played Queen B4, Bishop D8, Knight B7, uh, Rook F3, Knight D6, Queen E7, Bishop D2, Knight F6, and uh, yeah, Vashi Lagrave managed to uh, to get his way out of this. 
yeah, I guess I guess this is sort of this is sort of fine, isn't it? Sort of position in the Nidorf where as long as you're active and you can keep this light squared bishop under wraps, then you're going to be fine. Um, so King B1 was uh, was played by um, uh, by Leela. Uh, bishop D8, Knight B7, Bishop C7, and then Queen C3 again. Um, you know, again we're targeting the D6 pawn and we're we're coming we're crawling all over your queen side light squares. So Queen B8, Queen C6, Rook F3, Bishop G1. Rook f6, c4, takes, takes. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, this is again one of those positions um, where, um, you know, as black, I'm, uh, I'm rather, I'm rather worried, you know, but the, en the engines is just fine. I mean, actually, you know, we're following um, a high class correspondence game here, you know, white's 2594, Hall against Daubenfeld, 2510. Maybe Dragon Miss knows both these, uh, these players, but it's a pretty high rated um, uh, match up there. And uh, well, that game went, um, went knight f4, bishop e3. And now um, um, a5 uh, was played in that correspondence game. Rook f1, rook f7, a4, knight b6, bishop b3, knight d7. Uh, quite careful play from uh, from black. And uh, well, um, in my on my best hardware, um, uh, Stockfish against Komodo. Komodo played knight g2. We got bishop c5, very nice idea, hitting the d6 pawn, hoping for takes d6 check. A king h8, queen d7, rook g1, takes bishop a6, rook there, rook g2, bishop c6, rook b4. And uh, yeah, you know, Komodo dragon uh, held the draw there. But again, you know, feels, feels kind of fraught really. You know, it's uh, not easy at all for black. You really need to know your stuff to uh, to hold this. And, you know, again, it's one of those things. I mean, there are different lines of the knight or fly. The one we, you know, we looked at last time with, um, you know, with uh, with b4 instead of knight h5, where you feel, yeah, you know, I've got some some winning chances here. Whereas here, I just feel, oh, you know, if I play it well, I'll hang on. But um, uh, white's just crawling all over me. Well, black Marlin played uh, rook f7. We got bishop e3. And um, yeah, uh, knight f6 was uh, was played. And um, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, I just think that white is just nicely better in uh, in this position. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, um, uh, Stockfish against Komodo Dragon played um, this sort of uh, setup. Knight f6, knight g8, knight f6, you know, and sort of held it like that. Um, and that's fine. But um, yeah, again, it doesn't fill me with uh, with total joy, I have to say. Um, and after knight f6, rook f1, e4, bishop d4. e4 was a bit dodgy, I think. Uh, just this bishop now has got uh, lovely play. e4 pawn is um, is uh, is weak here. Um, rook e7, bishop e2, knight e5, takes, takes. And then um, um, a nice move, uh, knight c5. We've got, uh, um, I think, dc... I don't think, ooh, I should have. Uh, I should have verified this. I assumed rook takes f6 in this position is uh, is really strong. Um, so uh, um, uh, I think that was the uh, that was the one. Um, so rook e7 played knight e6, bishop a5, rook c1, and uh, well, basically Leela was in control. And uh, well, when Leela was in control, Leela did what Leela does, and just started uh, you know sort of uh, um, playing around, squeezing nicely. Bishop a6 is a nice move. Rook a6, we've got queen c8 check. And um, uh, after queen g8, queen c4, well, I mean, you know, you're just going to start, um, you're going to entrench your uh, your bishop on some sort of good square, and then you're just going to push the um, the queen side pawns and uh, and win there. And that's basically what uh, what Leela did. Actually, Leela also uh, moved this rook's pawn up to h6 because it was feeling lonely. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, basically, you know, a very nice position for... Uh, um for for white there so yeah i mean um you know uh quite interesting to see halogen play this uh um uh, black marlin and i think mantissa as well to be honest um but yeah in general i wouldn't recommend this uh this line for black really um you know, even though uh, maxime rachila grave has played it quite a bit you know i i just tend to think that um uh, the positions that you end up with you know either a position where um uh, as we saw you know the the center has been cleared of um of uh, of pawns and your um uh, white's just got some some play on the light squares and black's got an extra pawn i mean these i already find you know just not very uh, aesthetic to look at as black and uh, you know already a little bit worried 
Um, and uh, yeah, positions uh, like the ones that uh, Leela steered for against um, um, against uh, Black Marlin, like um, like this one, for example, and then Queen C6, and then we end up with Bishop takes C4. Again, you know, control of the light squares. Black's piece is rather uh, blocked up. Um, difficult for a human player to really assess, you know, how dangerous is the play that's coming towards me, and not really very clear from the black point of view. You know, how am I improving my position? It's uh, yeah. I think you'd really need a lot of work anyway with black in order to uh, to get this uh, to get this right. So um, yeah, basically a very interesting uh, set of games there in the um, uh, in the Nidorf. Um, yeah, we've seen g5 b4 the the main line, and we've seen uh, g5 knight h5 as well. And uh, well, I do much prefer uh, b4. I think in a subsequent video we'll probably have a look at uh, some of the um, uh, the experiences with h5 moves um, because uh, yeah, I mean the the engines were were playing this quite a bit coy vistal. Uh, I seem to recall a game there, and uh, and that was actually uh, leading to very very interesting games as well. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that uh, this deep dive uh, into the Nidorf. Um, I certainly it's brought back a lot of nice memories for me from my uh, professional time. If you like the video, why not give a like, tell your friends, subscribe to the channel, uh, even take a look at my new book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which is uh, full of great stuff like uh, like this, great analysis, great uh, you know explanation of what engines are thinking and doing, which um, you know is pretty important uh, in the modern chess world. And uh, otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching. Keep tuned because there's lots more to come.